Released by Konami in 1999 on the Nintendo 64, Castlevania Legacy of Darkness would take place after Castlevania Circle of the Moon, but in an alternate timeline. Directed by Yuji Shibata and written by Takeo Yakushiji and Koichi Yagi, the game would be an expanded release of Castlevania for the Nintendo 64, called Castlevania 64, adding additional playable characters and campaigns. The story only gets larger from here, so let's cut it down to size with a recapitation. As the game begins, it's the year 1844 as Dracula's servant Death leads a blood sacrifice ritual to successfully resurrect the Prince of Darkness. Soon after, Cornell, a man-beast warrior with a near-immortal body, returns home to his village to find it in flames and overrun by undead. Though unable to find his little sister Ada, he picks up her dropped pendant from his home thinking she is still alive and follows her scent. With his ascetic training, Cornell is able to use magic and turn into a werewolf as the trail takes him to the imposing Castlevania. Crossing the foggy lake on a ferry, Cornell leaps aboard an abandoned ship, fighting fishmen as a thick mist obscures the path forward. While in the cargo hold, a giant claw crashes through the hull, striking Cornell, who moves quickly to escape the sinking ship and strike down the sea serpent that caused it. Making his way into the castle, the drawbridge lowers itself, as if inviting him inside, but he is immediately trapped behind some iron bars as he hears a familiar voice call him out. Cornell is relieved to see his friend Ortega, another man-beast warrior, and tells him their village was attacked, but is shocked to learn Ortega already knows because he is the one who attacked it. Ortega says he hasn't forgotten how badly he lost in a duel against Cornell a year ago, but was the one who kidnapped Ada as a sacrifice for Count Dracula, showing off the dark power he gained in exchange for selling his soul. Climbing the curving castleways, Cornell opens the way forward, exiting out into a luxurious villa, and is soon met by a snarling vampire. Reading a journal left behind by the owner, Mr. J.A. Oldry, Cornell finds the man not only loved being a vampire, but wished to turn his wife Mary and son Henry next, hoping to create more loyal servants of Dracula. Further in, Cornell sees Mr. Oldry banging on a door and shouting at his wife Mary that he's thirsty and demands to get a drink. He turns to greet Cornell, apologizing that he saw their little domestic dispute, but when asked, denies he knows any little girl named Ada. Cornell knows her scent is still here, and Mr. Oldry now lunges at him, turning into a vampire bat and hungry for his blood. Freeing Mary, she thanks him for saving her, explaining that a man named Gilles de Ray and a woman named Actrice turned her husband from a good man into a foul vampire. Were it not out of protection of her son Henry, she would rather die than be turned, and begs Cornell to use a strength to save Henry and help him escape from here. Her son is hiding in the garden right now, and she tells him of a secret path they can use, as the warrior agrees. Heading out, Cornell spots a curious contract on the ground, and picking it up is suddenly greeted by a man in a suit here on behalf of the drop parchment. Introducing himself as Renan, a demon merchant, he assures the warrior he is not his enemy, offering his wares and services to all with his contract, as even hell is going through tough economic times. Unlocking the guard maze, Cornell hears the rumble of a motor as he sees Frankenstein's monster with a chainsaw grafted onto his arm, chasing down a little boy who runs into the warrior. The ten-year-old boy is indeed Henry, as Cornell tells him his mother is alive and tasked him to help Henry escape. Managing to fight off the murderous madman, they make it out of the maze, as Cornell tells Henry how to escape from here, handing him a pendant that ensures wolves will watch out for him. Returning to Mary, she has relieved her son escaped as she gives him a key to the crypt to continue his search for Ada. Lurking down here is Gilles de Ray, who spars with Cornell, and the man-beast lays out Gilles flatter than a sandwich as Actrice enters the room as well, commenting the man-beast should be a good match for someone else, laughing and then leaving. Entering a hidden path in a coffin, Cornell avoids spinning blades and rolling boulders as he reaches the rooftop and handles a harpy in his way. Crossing the art tower, Cornell dodges carts, flames, and chandeliers to reach the eclectic Tower of Ruins, literally falling apart as he enters the Tower of Science next. Mechanical mayhem marks every step of the treacherous tower with unbelievably advanced weapons and contraptions being constructed here in the castle. Entering the control room, Cornell shatters a crystal to halt operations, but is soon trapped in the Tower of Duels and ambushed by a misshapen beast. Ortega looks on nearby, warning Cornell this is the fate of those who cannot break the seal placed by the man-beasts. In this subject's case, it was broken for them by Dracula, claiming there is a limit to benefits from aesthetic training, and the Dark Lord has easily exceeded that limit for the werewolf. Ortega invites Cornell to that same power, telling him he will be waiting ahead, knowing his rival won't die so easily. Forced to kill his fellow Beastman, Cornell chases after Ortega, passing through swinging sickles, stabbing spikes, cutting corridors, and fiery floors. Entering the clock room from the Tower of Sorcery, Cornell is cornered by Ortega, bursting with uncontrollable power and confessing he envied Cornell for learning how to manipulate his seal on his own. He also says Cornell used to be such a stone-cold warrior, wondering where his change of heart came from to drive him to pursue Ada so far, especially considering they are not even related by blood. Ortega adds right about now, Ada's sacrifice should be starting, hoping this will pressure Cornell to return to form as he himself transforms into a chimera. 
Unleashing his own werewolf form, Cornell defeats Ortega, who accepts his loss and admits he was lying about Ada, revealing he hit her in the clock tower, disobeying Dracula. He confesses he fought this duel on his own terms, not per Dracula's orders, and regrets killing the villagers, choosing to let his friend go to save his sister, and leaps over the edge of the tower to avoid catching Cornell in the explosion of his power running wild. Quickly climbing the cogs of the clock tower, Cornell finds Ada alive and well, though pushes her aside to dodge a sickle thrown their way as death reveals he has been searching for her. Capturing Ada, he scoffs at Ortega going against their master and says it's almost time for the ritual where Ada will be a divine sacrifice. Following him, Cornell is paused by Renan, who thanks him for his business and bids him farewell as he moves on to new ventures. He says there is news of an impending global war, and the death of millions is a wonderful windfall of business, taking his leave and assuring him they will not meet again. Entering a red carpeted room, Cornell sees Ada trapped in crystal but is confronted by Dracula himself, who recognizes the Wolfman's power and demands he fight him for his sister, amused at their family bond. After a light spar, Dracula exposes that she is a normal human, not a man-beast, and knows she is a survivor of the group of people Cornell's clan killed, wondering if he raised her out of a sense of guilt. Wishing to see his true strength, Dracula absorbs Ada into himself, ascending into a giant demonic form, though loses against the man-beast's overwhelming ferocity. Ada separates from Dracula as the Lord of Darkness melts away, still clutching her, and barely able to withstand the magic of his death throw, Cornell separates his magic werewolf form from himself, sending it to free Ada and sacrifice it in her place. Though Ada is saved, Dracula Ultimate laughs he still got what he wanted, disappearing into a vortex, now claiming the werewolf as his own. Leaving Castlevania, the duo meet Henry in the woods, who says the magic and the pendant guided him and protected him from evil spirits. The boy thinks his parents are lost though, as Ada sympathizes and recognizes the pendant as hers. Cornell reflects on the words of Dracula and Ortega, but both children have hope for tomorrow as the sun rises on a new day and Ada smiles, telling him family is more than just blood. Meanwhile, Death, Jill, and Actrice marvel at how much raw magical power is within Cornell's werewolf, containing it in a crystal and using this instead to begin a new ritual to bring back Dracula again to his true state, starting with using this bound soul to create a new body, laughing that this was the plan all along by Count Dracula. Elsewhere, a priest of the Eastern Orthodox Church produces the prophecy of a child of darkness being born bearing blue eyes and hair who will be the new vessel for the true devil on his eighth birthday, but two more will arrive with the power to stop them. As eight years would pass, it's the year 1852, as in the province of Wallachia, ancient horrors return as Dracula awakes, and emerging to meet them is Reinhard Schneider, a descendant of the Belmont clan and current wielder of their holy whip, bound by fate to oppose Dracula. In addition, Carrie Fernandez, a 12-year-old prodigious witch and distant descendant of the Belnades bloodline, feels compelled to use her gift in the fight against evil. Together, they meet before the gates to Castlevania, working together to beat down a giant skeleton ape that fights till its last claw and are halted by a closed castle gate. Reinhardt splits off to raise the gate, forced to destroy a massive bone snake in his way, and is shocked to see Dracula himself already, proclaiming their doom, yet strangely not attacking and leaving for now. With the gate lifted, Carrie moves on ahead, entering a villa and met by a grizzled cross-wielding man named Charlie Vincent who is glad to see the young witch as a human, wondering if she is another lost villager, and declares himself the mightiest of all vampire killers. Carrie declares she is here to kill Dracula and the old man bursts into laughter, telling her to go home and hands her the key to the archives. Ignoring Charlie, Carrie exits out into the hedge maze when an 8-year-old boy with blue hair and eyes and fine clothes calls out to her. He introduces himself as Malice, saying his parents were killed while he and all the children of the village were stolen away to this castle, as a devil in a black cloak said they were looking for a certain child. His head begins to hurt and suddenly a pair of demonic hounds approaches them, encroaching upon Carrie but ignoring the child. Strangely, Malice happens to run exactly to the end of the maze and Carrie urges him to escape now on his own. Meanwhile, arriving later is Henry, grown up and now a knight in service of the church who has been deployed on a special mission. While Reinhardt and Carrie conduct their battle against Dracula, Henry would rescue the six kidnapped children in the castle. Utilizing a gun to fight the minions of the night, the holy soldier struts into the same castle that killed his parents, ruthlessly smiting those fallen to darkness one bullet at a time. Entering the garden maze, he fearlessly faces the Frankenstein's monster that tormented him as a child, finally destroying the nightmare once and for all. His rescue operation takes him below ground in the tunnels and mines underneath the castle, taking out a nest of demonic spiders and their spider queen, using his blade and holy water to purge the fiend and continue his mission. Seeing Carrie has gone on without him, Reinhardt continues to the villa where he runs into a pale young lady in a red dress named Rosa, who ignores the hunter and wishes to water the white roses, staining them red with blood. He realizes she's a vampire and she's surprised he is not afraid, as he replies he was taught not to attack the weak, to which she replies such sentiments will get him killed. 
Reinhardt declares he is here to hunt Dracula, and after a pause, Rosa says he'll need to go to the castle archives first, though another adventurer already took the key. Rosa leaves, hoping he doesn't die too soon, as Reinhardt soon runs into a villager he sees as a vampire in disguise, quickly destroying him. He later enters a crypt beyond the garden maze, walking in on a vampire feeding on a fresh kill, who is surprised how strong the hunter is. Just then, his victim turns into a freshly turned vampire as well, and Reinhardt is forced to quickly put her down too. Dropping down a hidden passageway, Reinhardt's eyes fixate on a woman bathing in the river for research purposes, but sees she is actually a venomous arachne, slaying her quickly. He spots a bloated body nearby, wondering if they drowned, but sees the cause is really the poisoned water from the river. Carefully crossing the cursed currents, Reinhardt runs into Rosa again, standing outside a circle of daylight, and with firm resolve, steps inside to kill herself. Reinhardt rushes in to pull her out before she completely burns up, though Rosa pushes back, insisting this is what she wants, but he refuses to allow suicide, even for a vampire. For being denied the chance to find forgiveness for her soul, she demands the vampire killer kill her, a vampire, but he still hesitates and she chides him for being so soft before women. While with Carrie, she finds herself in the waterways, repulsed by the poison in the water while fighting back the lizardmen that lurk within. Descending into the dismal depths of the deadly dungeon, she follows the poison to the source, being a mighty Medusa, taking her down with her own magic. Impressed at this feat is Actrice, remarking that child or no, she is a true Fernandez. Introducing herself as Dracula's servant, she notes it would be a shame to kill Carrie, offering instead for her to join them as her power would greatly help them revive the Count to his full power. She gives her time to think about it, taking her leave as the witch wonders what she meant by his full power. Later, she runs into Malice again, wondering why he is here and not escaping, but the boy seems confused by her question. He instead replies asking if she's serious about fighting Dracula, and if so, how come, wondering if it is for the sake of his lost family or the kidnapped village children. Carrie swears to destroy Dracula and Malice chuckles, claiming it's impossible, stating quickly how they're all going to die down here, and runs off. Arriving in the castle's center, Reinhardt sees the blood from a crying statue form a new foe as stained glass knights shatter before the crack of his whip. He runs into a lizard man who insists he is just a cursed human, and to prove he is friendly, tells him the few ingredients he can mix together from the torture chamber to make a powerful improvised explosion. Finding this helpful, the hunter passes by some crushing traps that nearly turn him into a sandwich, using the explosive to destroy a massive cracked wall hiding a large crystal repository of magic. Releasing it revives a dead behemoth nearby who relentlessly chases the hunter, firing powerful beams non-stop until it is completely dismantled. Beyond, he runs into Rosa again, this time with a blade in hand who scolds him again for not leaving, and the hunter sees death looming nearby as Rosa lunges at him. Fending her off, Reinhardt beats Rosa but does not comply with her wish to die and end Dracula's curse on her while she still has her human soul. Death cuts them off, saying it's only a matter of time before the curse upon her deepens and takes stronger hold, taking her away and assuring Reinhardt they will meet again. Elsewhere, Carrie crashes motorcycle driving skeletons in the hallway as she is met by Actrice again, telling Carrie she sees the witch has made her choice clear. She introduces Carrie to a vampire that holds the same power as her, and Actrice explains she was Camilla Fernandez, Carrie's cousin who previously challenged the castle, was captured, and turned into a vampire despite her resistance to the curse. She leaves the cousins to fight to the death, laughing and leaving, and seeing no way to save Camilla, Carrie destroys her and wishes her a peaceful afterlife. Reinhardt battles his way through Dual Tower, taking down monstrous beastmen like a werebull and were tiger while slipping past spinning blades, chasing death to the top of the tower. Toying with the hunter, death sends a storm of slicing sickles towards Reinhardt, and while he does his best to dodge, he is staggered by a direct hit as death unleashes a deadly barrage. Shielding him with her body just in time, Rosa saves Reinhardt's life, though collapsing from the attack. Dying in his arms, Rosa thinks Reinhardt's strong and pure heart may be exactly what is needed to defeat Dracula, and he promises not to fail, praying for her soul and handing her a cross as she dies and fades away. Death laughs that a vampire killer mourns for a vampire, and Reinhardt counters he cannot forgive Death's murder of such humanity. Focusing in, Reinhardt clashes with Death, edging on a win with the Holy Whip as Death curses his bell on blood, leaving this world and promising him a seat in hell. Climbing the clock tower, Carrie faces down Actrice, who is still impressed by Carrie and invites her to give her power and soul to Dracula with a ritual involving 100 sacrificed children. She herself killed her own child to attain eternal life, and disgusted, Carrie says that her own mother, even though she was a stepmother, loved her so much she gave her life to save Carrie's. Actrice dismisses this, loving herself first and foremost, and bears down her crystal powers upon the young witch, though still falls in a match of magical might. Defeated, her eternal life is cut short as Actrice shrivels up, crystallizes, and shatters, and coldly, Carrie knows Actrice could never defeat her and only delayed her fight against Dracula. 
Carrie and Reinhardt meet up, entering Dracula's coffin room as Dracula appears before them, eager to fight. However, the vampire lord crumples under their combined might and magic a little too easily, laughing as if he's won before bursting into light and flames. The room begins to collapse as they hurry outside and are surprised to see Malice riding atop a winged nightmare steed. Carrie senses Malice's evil aura is far more powerful than Dracula's, and smirking, Malice explains they only defeated Jill, who was disguised as Dracula, though his defeat was still unexpected. Revealing himself to be the true Dracula, Malice assumes his true form, surging with power, saying Malice was just a vessel as he gathered his complete strength. After clashing, the pair beat down the real Dracula, and falling, he reverts back to Malice, who has no memory or knowledge of what's going on. Just then, the greatest vampire killer Charlie enters and douses Malice in holy water, not buying the act, and exposes the deceit. Outraged, Malice brings Carrie and Reidhardt into another dimension where he can let loose with all of his power, ascending into his full demonic form, and pushes the pair to their limit in an explosive battle. The duo win the day as the demon is destroyed and Castlevania begins to collapse. As they look on from a distance, Reinhardt wonders if the struggle against Dracula will ever end, as he sees red rose petals begin to fall from the sky. In a beam of light, Rosa is miraculously brought before him, relieved of Dracula's curse and fully restored to life with her humanity. Thankful, she gives Reinhardt a hug as the hunter says that as long as evil lurks in the hearts of men, Dracula will return. That said, humanity has faith and love, and together that gives them the hope they need to fight despair. Smiling, he offers to escort Rosa home as they part ways with Carrie who leaves to visit her mother's grave. Grateful for her mother's sacrifice, Carrie looks on in peace, content that she made her mother proud in the battle against never-ending evil. Finally, Henry the hero leads all six children from the castle safely, smiling as the sun rises on a new day, returning the children back to their worried families. Castlevania Legacy of Darkness has enjoyed the success of selling over 770,000 copies worldwide. This is the final game of the alternate timeline of Castlevania, though there is yet another subseries to cover. Let me know if you agree about the removal from the main timeline. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next battlefield.